Hey everyone, today we're going to be discussing how to make a villain character design that gives your audience context on their purpose in your story. In every TV, movie, show, or video game, the character design for the villain is guided by the villain's archetype. Though this is not the full list of villain archetypes, these are just the archetypes that stood out to me the most. These archetypes are mainly used to guide the villain's actions and purpose in the story. The archetypes help give context to the villains, and there are five styles that these archetypes fall into. Classic villains are characterized by their dark colors and their sharp shape language, usually older than the protagonist and have ambitions that go against their well-being. The outfits of classic villains often show symbolism of their particular corruption and villainous nature. Classic villains tend to be corrupted, power-hungry authority figures or individuals bent on revenge or acquiring some materialistic means at the expense of others. Classic villain is an effective and appealing design choice when writing a plot that revolves around good versus evil or when appealing to a younger audience to help them identify the antagonist very early on in the story. Twist villains, although they are not as frequently used, are a very critical subcategory in the classic villain design style. A successful twist villain uses the elements of character design to contradict the initial good guy persona the villain tries to sell the protagonist. Essentially, if a twist villain is a wolf in sheep's clothing, you should be able to spot out the wolf just by looking at their costume or physical features. Otherwise, their true nature should be revealed in the inconsistency of their actions throughout the story. Supervillains are another well-known character design style for villains. Most supervillains have exceptional physical strength, wear protective armor or a suit, and have special weapons. Additional supervillains are intimidating, lack relatability, and have an overall simple outfit design. Modern supervillains are much closer to the age of the protagonist, have a more appealing personality, and have a very flamboyant or colorful costume design. Modern supervillain outfits also speak more about the personality and background of the character and their powers. All supervillain designs should ultimately reveal that the character has power outside of natural abilities. This can be done in many ways, from giving your character foreign or unfamiliar equipment to making them look inhuman. Anime villain design is probably one of the most, if not the most, influential villain style for the most popular storylines today. No matter what genre of story these characters are in, they all maintain physical attractiveness and or intricate or compelling costume design. Whether the villain is intimidating or downright incompetent, there is something that draws the audience to like them in one way or another. What we can learn from anime villain design is to use the power of charisma and charm to make our characters villainous actions all the more heartbreaking. Anime villains are not always attractive, but this is just the general rule. Modern villain designs are characterized by bright colors, exaggerated shapes, and a 
personality that is very likable or comical. This villain design style works best for storylines where the protagonist faces the villain multiple times and there is no pressure to resolve the conflict. The villain maintains their corrupt and immoral nature, but the audience anticipates their conflict with the protagonist, knowing that their plan will always fail in the end. Video game villains are heavily influenced by modern villain design, maintaining the bright colors and exaggerated shapes. To call them aggressive would be an understatement as their body language and their expressions are unrealistically tense and aggressive at all times. Most video game villains are monsters because it fits the narrative of the protagonist in the game having to deal with forces that are much greater and stronger than themselves and it quickly establishes them as the hero of the story. In conclusion, a good villain design gives clear context on the villain archetype through color, shape, language, silhouette, physical features, and costume design. There are five main types of villain design, which are classic, super, modern, anime, and video games. I placed the villains in this video in one category. Many villains are a combination of two or even three of these design styles. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment on some of your favorite villains. Dream big, live bold, and keep on creating. I'll see you next time.